what is up family welcome back to the picking fruits channel today we are going to be continuing our series how to grow mushrooms and this will be part two we'll be taking some of our healthy mycelium that we germinated from swabs and prints and we will be taking some of the sectors off of each plate and we will be looking for the best growth and transferring them to new plates to isolate some of that beautiful mycelium today you are who you are today see you're still me but you're a newer version For our project today, some of the materials that we are going to be using will be a scalpel, a dermal punch, sterile blades, freshly poured agar plates, and of course, the mycelium we've been growing. So to get started today, I've already put a fresh sterile blade on my scalpel, and I'm going to put it to the side and have it ready. And the next, I'm going to be showing you some of the growth that we've achieved from our multi-spore germinations. And as you can see here, the zigzag streak that we originally made with the spore swab, and if you haven't seen that video, I will link it to the top so you can see it. Some of this mycelium has already started to become very vigorous in growth, starting to look very aggressive. You can see the, the multiple colonies that have started to mate together, creating these very dense patches of mycelium. And today we are going to be sectoring some of this mycelium onto fresh plates. And I have another plate here to show you, but also from the same streaking. And we are going to take the two best looking growths from these two plates and put them to the side to watch them later to see what we want to choose and select for best genetic makeup. So we're going to be using our dermal punch here to take some of the best looking mycelium from the plate and transferring it onto a fresh plate. And if you can see here, right here at 6 o'clock, we see a very dense patch of mycelium and it looks like the mycelium from the right has made it with the mycelium from the left and producing a very dark patch of mycelium that looks like it can be very promising for future growth. So we're going to be taking that and placing it onto our new plate and very quickly we're going to stab it, pull out, trading hands. I'm going to be taking the piece of mycelium, putting it face down onto a plate and we will close our plate and move on to the next one. Here is our second plate. Again, we are looking for the densest mycelium on the plate. And if you can see here, most of this mycelium looks very sparse. It doesn't look very thick. But if you can see here at the 12 o'clock position, it looks like there's a colony that's grown out with a neighboring colony, made it pairing. You can see some of the dark mycelium starting to grow right here. But if you look right here to this, to the right side of it, it looks to be some very nice growth that looks fairly even. If you can see this colony looks a little bit darker than the one to the right, but where they've joined and made it, it looks very nice and dense. So I'll be taking some of that. And I will not be sterilizing my blade or scalpel in between transfers with these plates uh, because both of these plates look to be healthy and both of these plates were germinated with the same streak so it wouldn't really matter if we sterilize the blade or a dermal punch in between transfers. Alright so now that we've made our transfers I'm going to be labeling each plate individually to make sure that we don't misplace them or mix them up so that we can keep track of our genetics. Alright up next we have the raw done and I've already pre flame sterilize my scalpel and the, the dermal punch. So again, we are looking for some nice growth and we are not expecting much from these multi-spore germinations. Once we sector off and isolate some of these colonies, we will start seeing the rhizomorphic growth. For, but for the most part, right now it's mostly tongue and toes. But we are gonna be taking from the nicest looking mycelium that we can find. And I think right there is the best spot for this plate. So again, taking our punch, placing it face down on the plate, going on to the next one. And I think I already see a colony or a mated pair where I want to take the sample from and it's going to be right here at the 12 o'clock position. And I'm going to be taking it from the outermost edge because that is the mycelium that is going to be the most of fast growing and placing it face down on our host plate. And again, we will very quickly label them and put them to the sides so not to get them confused with any other samples that we're going to be pulling today. 
Up next we have the EQ that we got from our sport print. And uh, this one here happens to be, uh, or actually these plates were the very best looking plates from all of these germinations. As you can see there are multiple colonies. They've already reached the edge of the plate. What I'm going to do here today is I'm going to be taking a best growth from the upper middle of the plate. And as you can see there is a concentration of spores there by the look of the agar where it's very dark. And there is also some upward growth on the mycelium that is reaching for the air. So I'm going to take some of that and transfer it to our plate. see this mycelium is very beautiful it's already reached the outer edges of the plate and for this sample I'm going to be taking some of the outer growth some of this mycelium here has already reached the edge of the plate looking very promising and again very quickly taking our sample face down onto our plate and when you're making these transfers you don't need very much material to start off with. The smallest transfer will produce beautiful growth. So these next two plates that I'm going to show you happen to have some very interesting mycelium and I believe both of these plates contain haploid spore germinations where they have not actually formed a mated pair colony. So I'm going to be taking a single sample from both of the plates and putting them on a single plate and I'm going to attempt to breed them together to, to produce a unique fruit. And I will also be taking some of the more prominent mycelium and transferring it onto the plate for some isolation in the future. So here is the little germination that I'm talking about and as you can see it is singular, it has not yet made it with anything else on the plate. So I will be taking some of this. And then I will also be taking some of this here because it also has not made it with anything else on the plate. Hopefully you'll get what? Hopefully producing a phenotype that is unique from all of these other germinations that we've gotten on the plate. So placing them next to each other in this fashion, over time they will grow, and when the two myceliums meet, they will either create a third strand of mycelium, which will be able to produce fruits, or they will reject each other, splitting away from each other, and that will show us that they are not compatible. And for our second sample, I'm going to be taking mycelium from this dish and if you can see the mycelium right here intersecting in this section right here looks like it has made it so we'll take some of that and hopefully that will produce primordia in the future next we have our GJ squat and if you can see here the mycelium has grown but it's very very light and you can't see much structure except for this little colony right here, which I will take a sample of. And same thing on this plate, except we have some growth on the outer edge here that looks a little bit better than the previous plate. And I will take a sample from this side. Again, transferring them to our plates, face down, mycelium side down. When you transfer these plates, or when you transfer mycelium uh, onto a new plate, you do not necessarily have to place them face down. Uh, but I particularly like this method. It allows the contact with the mycelium to the new agar plate uh, to be instantaneous. And you do not have to wait hours for the mycelium to grow and look for food. Okay, up next we have our white rabbit. And this germination here is particularly special to me. And as you can see, the growth on this plate is very, very slow, unlike the other plates that have already colonized uh, the full plate. 
Uh, so for this particular sample, I will be taking four agar transfers to four brand new plates, and I will be choosing a random, no particular reason. As you can see, the growth here is fairly uniform. Uh, there is a very dense colony here, another one here in the middle, a third baby colony that's working up uh, at the top right, and top middle. <laughs> As you can see here when I stabbed it, the cotton that we had actually used to germinate the spores has come up. So I will actually take it and transfer it to a new plate and uh, just keep the mycelium running. Uh, so here we have the, our first transfer will be the cotton, second transfer will be the, the little spot that I poked, third transfer will be uh, up here in the middle, and then our fourth transfer will be this colony starting up from right here. So very carefully, I will try not to drop the cotton uh, because this cotton I will not be able to replace unlike the agar wedges and uh, if you saw the first video I stabbed the mycelium or I stabbed the spores and the cotton into the agar and in this instance I will not have to because the mycelium has already started uh, to grow so it will seek the new food source once transferred our second transfer third transfer and our fourth up next we have our albino BMR germination and here you can see this mycelium has been very aggressive and growing it has already reached the outer edges of the plate uh, so I will take some of the best looking mycelium that I can find on this plate here as well and here I'm going to very quickly show you the second plate and this mycelium does not look to have been as aggressive as the previous one but still showing us some very dense spots I happen to like this spot here and this colony right here looks huge so we'll take from it as well and last but definitely not least we have the A8 Texas hybrid and uh, as you can see here some of this mycelium is spotty in places but they're very dense and very thick in other places still looking very promising very happy to uh, be able to work with such specimens and uh, looking forward to what they can produce from this first plate i am looking at this mycelial mycelium sector right here it's looking very dense and from the second plate as well another sector from the middle So if you guys have enjoyed this video, if you've learned something, uh, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit that like button, share this with your friends, and of course visit our website so you can shop with us at pickingfruits.com. Join our Facebook groups to join the discussion, and of course follow us on Instagram where you can see all of these updates taking place in real time as the days progress. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.
upper top right side. Oh, <laughs> oh that makes so much sense. Can you move the, the heat gun a little more this way just for some like outro? 